All right, Mike, when we spoke to you uh, on the bus of all places the other day, um, you were saying how, how chilled out you are before fights. You don't tend to get dialed into the opponent until close to the fight. When is it that you flip that switch and it goes from being cordial to being go time? Yeah, you always have like different moments. So I think the first moment's obviously going to be the weigh-in. Uh, it's uh, the, the look, the, the, there's a certain energy there that you kind of have to switch on for. Um, and then again, it's back to chilling, relaxing. Uh, and then the next time is when I'm walking into that arena in the change room, at that, that, that point I'm MVP. And then it's just taking all that energy into the cage. I think this is the first, first rematch of your, of your career. So has that affected or changed the way that you normally prepare for fights? Is this different because it's a known opponent this time around? No, it's only different because we, you know, I felt you, like I felt your strengths and weaknesses it makes it easier because obviously this it's the unknown factor anybody with anybody else you know you know what you're doing and how hard you're working in the gym but is it going to is it going to be effective against that person on that day and because i felt him regardless of what's happened i felt him i know exactly what to expect i know how how strong he is um you know i felt that the, his low kick the speed of it and the timing of it it makes it easier going back in the second time of course he's going to make slight adjustments but i don't think he's going to do he's going to do too much different he's going to be hoping to kind of expect, uh, win in a, in a similar fashion. So given what you just said, does that mean that we can expect a faster start in general from the pair of you because that feeling out process has, has already been done once before? Does that mean that you kind of have the range already and you can be more confident to throw, the, throw your strikes earlier in the first round than maybe you would on a normal fight? Definitely from my point, but from his side, I don't expect, I, he, I don't think he's even has the fast pace. I think he's only ever in gear two his whole career. Um, which is why I think it's, it's a positive thing and I think I've spoken to you guys about it. It's a positive thing and it's a negative thing. Positive is when you come up against a frustrating opponent like me, where I normally drag people out of their shell, he's just like, nope, just going to chill in gear two and continue, you know, going at that set, set pace. Uh, whereas when he's losing a fight and he needs to kind of leave that, that kind of space and leave gear two to kind of push the fight a little bit more, he's still like, nope, I'm going to continue going at that pace. And obviously you've seen that in a couple of, you know, the last two fights and, you know, previous fights that I've watched before where you feel like he could have done a little bit more and he probably could have won the fight, but just sat in gear two. So again, positive and negative to that. How much is your ability to frustrate him going to be a factor in this? He's coming into this fight, he spoke to us, same day we spoke to you earlier in the week. He's on a two-fight skid. He's really not, not, not happy with how he performed last time out mm -hmm. against Amosov. He knows he has to put in a good performance this weekend. Mm -hmm. How much is your fighting style and ability to frustrate him going to play into this one, given that he really wants to push forward and, and get another big win this weekend? Well, to be fair, I'm, all, I'm only ever going to be myself, and that's usually frustrating enough. I'm not going to try and add any extra to in hope that he is. Like I said, he doesn't tend to, regardless of what he says, he doesn't tend to budge from you know, or do too much. So I'm not gonna, there's no point in me trying to you know, go in that direction when there's a roadblock, X is, I can't go down that road, I'm just gonna go down this way, where I know it's, it's, it's an easier route to the finish. Um, so yeah, so for me, it's simply a case of doing what I do best. I know the timing that I want, I know the distance that I want, and just putting it on him and getting, get, getting rid of him as soon as possible. Michael, um, the Countdown series made a big deal of um, Lima's low kicks, showed him practicing them before. Uh, I suppose if I speak to what happened in the first fight, it seemed like you were in control for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. you had, like the oblique kicks were killing him, even when he took you down, you were dominant, you were mm -hmm. doing the most damage. What things do you change? I suppose you, I know you said that you got a bit careless for mm -hmm. the finish. What, what do you change in training to ensure that you don't kind of see the finish come in and get a bit excited like what do you do in training how do you manage that to be fair that, that that side of it is more uh a mental side on my on my point it's very weird because it's, that was a very rare moment for me anyway it was something that i tend to not do i'm happy to you've seen me before knock somebody down and let them back up there's no panic to finish the fight i'm like i'm i'm, I'm already winning i know i when i get to that kind of state i'm like there is nothing you can do now I've already got your time in, I've got, I've got all of that. So I don't know what it was per se for him, I'd, maybe the competition, maybe going into the next, you know, the final. And I, I, I couldn't tell you, but there was something in that very moment when I saw his let's go, I was like, damn, I'm about to finish this now. Um, so I'm not sure what it was. 
uh, uh, really. But I just know I'm not going to go back there. There's no reason for me to panic. There's no, there's no rush. I can take my time, see his legs wobble, and just be, just enjoy that moment, and then take my time and find that shot again. Take my time, find that shot again. Because again, as you say, I was, I was, I was very dominant, and I, I feel like he was, because I know him in terms of not being able to push past that gear. Nothing was going to change, even if it went to the decision. Nothing more was going to change. He's always going to be the same thing. He's going to get hit, and he's not going to find a shot. Like I said, if I take that carelessness out, then I, I already won the fight. And this is why I'm so confident going back in. And if he decides to do something abnormal, and actually does decide, you know, based on what he said, you know, he has been saying, and he starts pushing forward, he's going to run into something horrible, absolutely horrible, which is just going to make the fight finish. 10 times quicker, so I'll pick him up and we can go to an after party. <laughs> speaking, speaking of which, Michael, we've seen um, Infinity Stones. I've seen you doing the Iverson crossover in the first fight. We've seen Pokemon Go. What you got planned for this one when you get the finish done? You know what? Um, I, was, I was talking to someone just before. Um, it's weird in this one, I genu I'm always a person that's like, read the crowd. Do you know what I mean? So obviously in Japan, when I finished, you read the crowd. They, you know, they're very respectful people, they, you know, they're very, you know, they pride themselves on that. You know, went on my knees, just, and that was it. So you read the crowd. So for here, it genuinely feels to me that they don't need much more than the W. Like, everybody here is here because they, they want me to win. That is it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I don't feel like I need to, I've got a couple of ideas, but in all honesty, the lightliness is, I don't need to do much more. To be fair, I'm going to put on a show before I even get in the cage, so it's all good. <laughs> Last one for me, was if I can. Um, so you, you had a bit of fun with um, arms. <laughs> I thought for that, I see you in the corner. Did it look like he did he get any time with Barrier? <laughs> <laughs> why was he active on his back? You know what, it's, um, it's, it's, it's always a shame, like to, I wish you could kind of, you could show more in the gym before fights so people can kind of see what we see obviously kind of gives away your game so you can't do too much but the only problem was obviously with everybody especially with their first time you don't know how you're going to perform when the cameras are on when the lights are on when the, the people are there in the gym he was he was literally on point doing this okay um, yeah okay but and he picked up things he's an athlete he's a tree truly is, uh, is an athlete and he picked up things so quickly man like we were genuinely impressed and all the things that he kind of got caught out with in terms of like the takedown and the, you know the stuff on the ground, just left his head. And it, it happens. I've had I've had teammates uh, that have gone in on their first fight, and they struggle to kind of get past the occasion. And it's weird when I, when when we were speaking about like the whole COVID thing and crowds not being there. I was like, certain people are going to perform better because they are so much. They, they, a lot of them is just beat, a lot of them is beating themselves. But I've heard so many people and I've seen it, the guys in the gym that are killers. And when you go out and watch them, you're like, oh, man, like I, I want you to show everybody else what I see. So it, it was that for, for, for him, you know, he's, he's a lot better as an athlete. Um, but the good thing is it's, it's given him the bug to kind of continue learning and to continue getting better. So, you know, you might see him back in there again. Get some time in the area. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Just two for me, if that's okay. Uh, firstly, I want to ask, uh, back, back in London, with a crowd, how's that feel to be fine in front of fans again? Oh, man, like, it, or in London, I always, you've seen me before. I always, like, perform, I always lift. I always, that, that energy in, in the arenas that we are over here is great, especially when I walk out. This time, I feel like everything we've seen before in the past in terms of the energy in the crowd, it's going to be times 100. It's going to be times 100. I'm, the, it's going to be so much noise in there. There's going to be people are just. It's going to be one of those nights similar to like a, 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 the, the cyborg, where it's like where if you was there, you remember that moment. You remember everything. The, the sound, the this, the that. You like this person that was sitting next to me. It's one of those moments I can feel it. I'm going to give it to so many people that are in there. They're going to go back home to their friends, families, this that, and just constantly be talking about it for for months on end. So, uh, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm looking forward to it. I want to talk about uh, Anthony Joshua's uh, week uh, fought you against Alejandro Usyk mm -hmm. last weekend. Evaluation on that. How was your thoughts on that, and uh, what, what could be next? Yeah, to be fair, I feel that Anthony Joshua just went with the wrong game plan. Him and his team, um, they, yeah, they, it, it, that was it. Usyk is an unbelievable boxer. 
uh, move so well, so slick, timing of jabs, this, that, all of that. I wouldn't go in there trying to outbox him. That's not the game plan. And the fact that even afterwards he said, yeah, you know, he wanted to try and, you know, outbox him and stuff. I'm like, for what reason? That doesn't make sense. He's had 300 fights, you know, in the amateur before he even got there. He's, I'm sorry, but in terms of boxing, they could have that fight a million times and you're not, you're not outboxing him. That's the, so let's just say, okay, shut that down. What, where are your attributes? You are an athletic man, the bigger fighter. Usyk don't knock that many people out in his own division, let alone he's coming up. Yes, over time, so towards the 12th round, you obviously saw shots, the cumulative shots start to take effect. But it took 12 rounds and he was landing quite a lot. So my thing is you could have double guarded and walked that guy down and landed massive shots because he's the bigger athlete and he was definitely going to land the bigger punches. He landed one crazy punch and it hit that one nearly enough, uh, took, took him out. Um, had his legs going and had made him start running. It kind of almost brought a little um, momentum to swing in his, kinda in, in his favor, but he decided to go back to boxing, standing still and then moving backwards. He was never going to win that fight that way. Just lastly, um, with the AJ loss, the English uh, combat sport fans, you know, on a bit of a down now. So, are you looking to relight that fire again? Yeah, I was, I was looking to do that regardless. You know, if, I, it would have been good if AJ won, and then I could add to that. Um, but yeah, it's to, to be fair, like I said, it's going to be a, a special moment for everybody. So, if it if it lights their fire back, puts a smile back on people's faces, then I've done my job. <laughs> now, obviously, you're not a fighter that's used to losing. You've only ever had one loss in your career. Um, I was just wondering, um, after that period, did you kind of have a few dark weeks, dark months, or was it just straight back to the gym and getting back on it? So, the used to not losing is wrong, so I'm going to quickly correct that. So, I remember I've been competing since I was five years old. So yeah. yeah. Although I'm not used to losing in this particular arena, I've had my ass kicked many a times. <laughs> I tell you that now. From like I said, from a very young age, I actually remember uh, probably a stint for about four years and we had competitions every weekend. So imagine four years, near enough, every single weekend we were somewhere, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, Manchester, Birmingham, somewhere to competing. And I was going on a bus, three hours in that direction, four hours in that direction to get my ass handed to me, to come back on the same bus where everyone's got their medals swinging and they were talking about the people that they beat up and I had to do that every weekend, every weekend, every weekend, and I kept doing it. Eventually, I started beating all the people that used to beat me, and then they never beat me again. So, I've lost a lot. This is not new feeling for me. And like I said, this with the team, when you're, you kind of want to do as well as everybody around you, and these guys, are con we, our team was on fire back in the day. London Predators were just like, we used to kill it uh, uh, back then. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely used to losing. I'm definitely used to coming back. So for me personally, it doesn't change anything. And I, so the second I lose, I always have, give myself a moment to just be annoyed at myself. Cause especially with that fight, like I said, I felt it was, it was all on me. So yeah, give yourself a moment to just be like, ah, like, you know, get out of your chest. And it's like, cool, back to the drawing board. There's no reason to have to go through this like dark phase. And da, da, da. I know what I can do. I genuinely believe in my abilities. And I, I genuinely believe what, what's gonna take place on Friday. Like I'm it's going to be bad and it's not for me it's going to be the other, on the other side if you get the win on um, friday night would you love to have that title fight back here in london yeah i guess uh, that's uh the direction i'm kind of heading in but at the same time i don't want to look past what's you know what's, what's happening in front of me right now this is a big moment i don't even want to spread any energy anywhere else all my focus is on this you know what i mean um so whatever whatever takes place after is what takes place after